Hello, I thought I'd just do a little show and tell video of all these electric vehicle parts that I have for sale at the moment. Uh, some of you may know that I've moved back to New Zealand from overseas recently. The last time I lived in New Zealand was about 2008 and at the time I had been inspired by one Mr. Gavin Shoebridge from New Plymouth, a fellow Kiwi, who had built himself an electric car and I had lots of money back then so I thought, oh cool, I'll try that myself. So I got together all this stuff and I was in the right in the middle of converting one of these um, Peugeot 205 hatchbacks and I'll put some photos of that that I have from 2008 in the video, hopefully if I remember. And I had the engine out and I'd changed over the, um, well I'd had this block made up to fit the motor onto the gearbox for that and it was all ready to go. And I, th I think all I needed extra was batteries and cabling for the batteries and I also had not organized any um, mounting for the batteries because the batteries are going to go in the back and sort of under the under the back seat as well uh, so I hadn't got around to that but then I moved back to Japan and Japan is a, not really a place for doing this kind of thing and I couldn't take it with me so I just put it into storage uh, and now I, I don't really have that much money anymore to not enough not enough money to finish this project anyway so I'm thinking of selling it um, because I've become interested in RC model stuff which is a lot cheaper as a hobby so I thought I'd just have a look at this stuff and uh, show you what it is because another thing that happened since 2008 was um, I've started making videos about electronic stuff so I thought the people that subscribe to my YouTube channel might be interested to see this stuff uh, so what is this? this is a very very heavy about 50 kilos or so 9 inch brushed DC motor. Uh, new, as in it hasn't been, it has never been turned over, but it has a bit of wear and tear just from being carried and moved around. Uh, this tape is on here just to stop little bits of dust and stuff getting in while it was at the machine shop getting this uh, plate made. Hopefully you can hear me. Where's the microphone on there? That's a microphone at the top, isn't it? Is this gonna, I'm just going to hold this. I think it might turn off if I, I want to make sure it doesn't turn off. Anyway, um, so yeah, it's really bloody heavy. But uh, you can see, hopefully on there, you have the spindle already welded on and this is ready and set up to go on to said Peugeot 205 gearbox. And these bolts will be all in the right place for it as well. Now I read that you can also um, use the Peugeot 106 um, gearbox and I think it's the same as the one that's in the 205. So if I came back to New Zealand with lots of money what I was thinking to do was use a Peugeot 20, uh, 106 instead of the 205 because the 205 is a bit, bit, of a, bit of an old grandma's car sort of thing the way it looks but um you have any pictures there well you can see what it's like but the 106 is a little bit more sporty looking and it's lighter and smaller so anyway that that should go right onto a 205 or a 106 gearbox um i don't think i have all the bolts for it though unfortunately it sort of looks like we might be one one or two bolts short perhaps all right um and i'll Hopefully I'll be able to look up the stats for this. There we go. So it is a ADC 203064001 and 72 to 96 volts DC. Not sure how much current it can pull. But I'll overlay the stats for this on the video when I'm editing it. Alright, so I have a bunch of other things to look at. Um, next part of the kit is speed controller. Now, this is a little bit different to the speed controllers we're used to for our quadcopters, isn't it? Uh, so this is a Curtis speed controller, pretty common actually for electric vehicles as far as I can tell. It seems like every second EV conversion has one of these and this does 96 to 144 volts and it can handle up to 500 amps a little bit more than your average RC and 
there's really nothing much nothing much no, no um, connections on it apart from these ones here and we just have a I think there's um this is the controller input so I think there's like potentiometer and maybe also a switch I'm not sure there's three of them here I can't really can't really remember what each of these terminals is for uh, but then we have two terminals here for actually might be two terminals there for incoming power and two terminals for outgoing power well it'll be one or the other so this all this does really is just turn the um, power on and off very very quickly and you can see I'll put the put a link to Gavin's original videos where you can see him driving his car and you can hear a high-pitched whining sort of a noise and that's coming from this being switched on and off so quickly You can hear that in an uh, RC car, I suppose, sometimes too, for a brushed, um, brushed DC motor. And this thing's bloody heavy as well. Not sure how much that weighs. Um, so these little mounts here, one of these will go under there if you want to hold it onto something. How do they work? Oh, I think they might be. How well you can see that there. Oops, oh shit. Oh well, since they fell out, let's have a look at them. So they'll, they'll go in there like that to hold it down onto something. And you would want to hold it down onto something like this. Uh, I probably could have bought this much cheaper locally. I bought all of this stuff, uh, had it sent over from the United States actually. So I, I probably should, could have got stuff like this cheaper locally, but this is just an aluminium sheet in the same sort of size that you could put under there as a heatsink. Um, not really sure what that's for. Anyway, um, so I'll start at this end because we're starting to lose our daylight. So this is a throttle. Curtis again. So it's basically just a, a large potentiometer with a heavy spring in it. It's quite a strong string spring because you're going to be pushing that with your foot. And it's not just a potentiometer because you can see, hopefully, there's also a switch. So when you get right to the bottom of the range of the pot, it's actually going to completely cut the connection altogether. So instead of having a low resistance, uh, or high resistance I guess, you get absolutely no connection at all. So that's just for safety when you when you take your foot off the throttle it's not going to be uh, interpreted as moving slowly. Still going. Okay. Alright, uh, next we have uh, so this is a, a relay and again very heavy. All this stuff is very heavy. Um, so you, there's 12 volts on this side and it's just a switch really and when you power it there this relay will push or solenoid will push this uh, large copper plate in the middle with the springs when it's unpowered it's held away when it's powered I presume it goes up like that to make a connection and it just closes the switch between these two terminals here I noticed just before when I was looking at this, there's a marked a plus on here, but I don't really see why you would care which side is which for just a closing a switch. Anyway. Alright, so as you're driving along, um, you might want to know how much current you're pulling. So that's what you can do with this thing. This is a large, heavy, again, shunt resistor, and it says uh, it can take up to 500 amps and 50 millivolts, I'm not really, sure, not really sure what that means, but basically what you do is you put your, uh, the, the full current of the, the driving current comes onto here and then out there, 
and then you can put another terminal on these these screws here and measure the voltage drop across these plates in the middle and that will let you know um, well you can multiply that voltage by a certain number and then you'll figure out what um, what current is passing through there and then you can bring that inside your car to the dashboard and display it on a meter all right first thing that's not heavy is this thing here called an inert switch and this is a safety device I think when you push it down it will be closing the switch and the idea is with this if you have a crash uh, you don't want the in circuitry to be closed and on and still trying to turn the wheels right so this is um, designed so that when it when it takes a, a, a whack or a knock it will it'll turn off um, so it's just a safety feature and next up we have another safety feature so all of this all of the safety feature is not just for fun it's um, as well as being safe it's actually um, keeps you legal so if you want to do an EV conversion and actually register it and drive it on the roads here in New Zealand you're going to have to be have all the stuff set up well, all these safety stuff anyway so the next one is it's like a panic button so if you have some sort of a situation where you again I guess it could be a crash maybe but any other type of situation where the inert switch doesn't go off but you really really want to stop everything from you want to stop all the current from going and stop the wheels from turning um, you can do that with this so it's another it's a relay again I guess well it's not not really a relay it's a it's a sort of a switch you can see in there there's another heavy copper plate and when that's pulled upwards it will close the connection between these two terminals so uh, I think the idea is with this I'm not going to take it out of the bag or anything but you can see there's a screw in the inside of that um, big red knob so you would screw that into onto the thread in there like that and then pull it out I guess and that would close the connection so that when you panic you just go bang and turn everything off immediately another requirement for the law all right um, now we have a fuse and fuse holder mounts this is it's called a little fuse but it's actually quite big and this is a 400 amp fuse rated to 250 volts AC or 200 volts DC and comes in the bag that says do not drop so I guess it's quite fragile or it can't take a shock and these are just um, very well insulated mounting posts to put the fuse on I think I guess you have to have something else on there as well um, but yeah they, they're for the fuse because fuse holders yeah and these are rated to 1000 volts 800 amps so that's means I guess that you could put 1000 volts between here and there and it would still insulate it enough I guess that what, what that means because there wouldn't be any current really going through there would it? Would there be current, much current going through that bolt? Not really. Hmm. Uh, so that's just the heat sink that we looked at and I think the only other thing that was in my box of stuff was this fan which is again this is probably something I could have bought locally if I was a little bit more careful with my money uh, heavy as usual but all it is basically is an electric fan so this is a, a 12 volt circuit fan and um, well yeah this is it's quite heavy but um, it's very very smooth bearings there and the reason for having this is because I was thinking of using lead acid batteries as the battery pack and the thing about lead acid batteries is that when they are producing uh, power when they're under load they tend to produce hydrogen and the hydrogen can bubble out and you would be placing your batteries in a battery box in here somewhere 
and the battery box can fill up with hydrogen, which is extremely flammable. So another, actually I'm not sure if this was a requirement of, of the law or not, but it probably was. Although they always like to require things, don't they? But the idea is that you'd have to vent the battery box continuously so that all of that hydrogen that's coming off the batteries would be expelled from the car and it's not allowed to build up and stay there. So you would make a hole in the side of the battery box and just stick this fan in there and have it running while you're driving to expel the air. Uh, and this little piece here I got separately. I just bought this on Trade Me, which is like New Zealand's version of eBay. And um, so all this other stuff came from the States. Oops, hope, hope you can still hear me. Uh, just put that there. Hello? You still running? Yep. Uh, so this is called a turbo timer. And I think people generally use it to keep the power on their turbo fans after they've stopped the engine. So you go out for a drive and then you come home or get to where you're going and then you turn the car off. But you still want to have that fan going because the batteries are still going to be bubbling out some hydrogen still for a few minutes. So this thing will let you keep that fan on for another say one minute or five minutes or three minutes or whatever. And I guess you can just turn it off manually like that. So it's just a little timer that you would hook up to that fan there to keep it going for a little while after you've turned the, the car off. Alright, so I think we covered everything there, didn't we? So, um, yeah, I'm looking, looking to sell this, I guess. It would be nice um, to, to do it, but, um, yeah, I'm not really earning enough money these days to, to do that. What is this? Oh, there's an EV conversion manual in there. I, to be honest, I think you're going to find most info on YouTube these days. So anyway, um, if you're interested in seeing how Gavin did all this, you can have a look at the video in the link in the description below, because he did a pretty good job and worked just fine. But, like I say, I don't think I'm going to be able to finish mine. Oh, this is just a little circuit diagram that came from uh, so ele oh Electric Vehicles of America was where I got this from. New Hampshire? Is it? Yeah. So I'll just hold this for a second, maybe maybe those who are interested can uh, take a little look at that later, pause the video. Oh, there was also this thing here, which is a, so this is a fuse for, for the 12 volt circuit, I think. 12 volts, 30 amps, 40 amps. I'm not really sure where this is supposed to fit into everything. Anyway, so if anybody in New Zealand is looking to make an EV conversion and they're okay with a Peugeot 205-106 that's the plate you're going to need all ready to go except for batteries and cabling for the batteries um, so if anybody I'll, I'll put this up for sale on an EV parts listing forum or something and if anyone's interested in buying it uh, get in touch with me and I can, I think I'd be happy to deliver this in the Upper North Island anywhere um, as part of the deal, probably, we'll see. Anyway, thank you for watching the video and uh, see you later.